Hey guys and girls, normally I try to start my videos by saying something cute or catchy, but uh, in today's video I'm just going to get right to the point and ask you if your Marlin 3030 is dirty. Well, if it is, and you're reluctant to get on the inside where that dirt's hiding out, I'm here to help you because we're going to get this guy disassembled and reassembled today just for routine maintenance. And if you'll stick around, I've got a surprise at the end. Hi, George here, and welcome to Tales from Target Suite, where I'll share my perspective on guns and shooting, and we'll spend some time at the range, and every now and then we'll reconvene out in my shop back in Houston, or here at the farm in Louisiana, where I'll build some fun projects, and we'll share an adventure or two that'll make even a grown man smile. And yes, in today's video, we are going to get the Marlin Model 336 disassembled for routine maintenance. This particular sample belongs to my friend Renee, and I featured it in another video already. And so we're going to get it taken apart just so you can see how to disassemble for, uh, for routine cleaning. And it applies, as I said, to both the Marlin, Marlin Model 336 as well as the uh, Model 1895 because they disassemble and reassemble in the same way. And I uh, just want to make sure everybody understands that uh, this is not going to be a video about modifying the Marlin Model 336. We're not going to add or take away any parts, and we're not going to modify anything on the inside. It's just about cleaning. It's just about getting it taken apart for the necessary cleaning that goes on after you've shot your rifle. And at the end of the video, I, we are going to do some energy transfer. And I was so fortunate to run across a couple of boxes of Federal Ammo with 170 grain nozzler partition bullets in it. I've been looking for the 170 grain bullets for the 3030 for a long time, and they have just been, been as scarce as hen's teeth. I think I said that once before. And so we're gonna compare, we're gonna do some ballistic um, energy transfer uh, comparison between the 170 grain round nose and the 150 grain bullets from, from, uh, from Hornady. And so, what I'll try to do here is go through step by step, slow enough in process to not bore you guys to tears, but to, to uh, hopefully be clear enough where you'll feel comfortable to get into your own Marlin 336 or 1895. And so um, I guess with no further ado, let's get started and see what, what this guy looks like on the inside. Okay, let me just say this up front. We need to have a decent screwdriver set, and the tips need to be hollow ground, whether they're individual tips like these are that are replaceable, like in the Wheeler set, or a, a regular traditional gun, gunsmith set of hollow ground screwdriver tips, then you're going to be good to go. But just make sure that you've got tips that fit every one of the screws in your firearm. And so the first thing we're going to do here is take the stock off. There's one screw here. And by the way, this, this rifle belongs to my friend Renee, and I've used it before in a video. Renee's rifle has a serial number that indicates it was made in 2007, so this is not a Remlin firearm. This is actually pre-Remlin days, so you'll want to decock your hammer, reduces tension on the mainspring, and then this will push right out. There's your mainspring. Now there's no tension on your hand lever, I mean on your uh, hammer. We're going to open this up, the finger lever up. And we'll take out this screw. That's a different screwdriver tip. And then this just comes right out. Okay, now we can take the bolt out. It just comes straight out, just like that. The ejector needs to come out, and we can push on this little pin right here, this little boss, and the ejector will fall right out. There it is. Boy, you just couldn't get much 
uh, much easier than that at this point. And what this level of assembly does, it allows you to clean your bore from the breech end instead of the muzzle end. Because cleaning your rifle from the, from the muzzle end will wear out, wear out the crown of your rifle and could cause accuracy problems. And so with, as you can see with the bolt out, we can look right through and we have complete access to clean with a cleaning rod from the breech end of your firearm. Okay, and then the next step would be to take out this assembly right here along with the hammer. And this assembly is held in place with the hammer screw, a screw right here, as well as a screw right here. And so we're gonna start by taking out the hammer screw. The hammer screw is under a bit of tension and so if we will just pull the trigger, it takes the pressure from the sear off of the hammer and it takes the pressure off of this screw as well. And so now this screw comes out really easy. Without, with tension on the hammer, there's a little bit of pressure on that screw. Okay, now we'll take out this screw. And this screw and this screw are two different lengths. Okay, and so I'm gonna show you so you don't get them confused. This screw is the shorter of the two screws, as you can tell. The short screw goes right here. The longer of the two screws goes right here. Okay, once we've gotten those screws out and the hammer screw, then this just pops right out. Just like that. Okay, and there's only one other part that we want to take out for this kind of uh, disassembly, and that's the locking lug. And this is the part of it, this is it right here. If you turn your rifle upside down, it will just fall out but, um, but here it is right here. So we can take this out, we can get this cleaned up, and we can lubricate. If you want to, you can lubricate some of these surfaces and some of the wear edges on the locking lug. So there it is. That's the level of disassembly that we're gonna do for this video. So let's get everything reassembled. And we'll close this guy up. And we'll put in the now you won't be able to with the locking bar, locking lug all the way ins inserted, you won't be able to get the bolt back in because as you can see, there is the locking lugs. And so we're gonna wanna pull that back to get the bolt back in. So we'll reassemble in the same order that we took it apart. put this guy back in. And you're going to want to line up this hole right here for your hammer screw. And then we'll put the long screw in this hole. And I don't tighten this screw or this screw until I've got my hammer installed, just in case this needs to move and make a little bit of adjustment to get the hammer screw in. So I just get these screws started. Next we'll put in the ejector. And 
And remember, the ejector has got a boss on it right here. And that boss is going to go into this hole right here. And there it is. We've got our boss right there. So the ejector is installed correctly. Okay, next thing we're going to do is put the uh, hammer in. And the strut will go in first, and then we'll work the hammer in so that the hammer, hammer screw will go right through this hole and through the hammer itself. And we are going to have to pull the trigger. And so to pull the trigger to make this happen, we have to depress this button right here, this tab right here, in order to get the hammer pulled to the rear. So I'm going to depress on that tab and then pull the hammer back, hold the hammer in the rear position. Okay, and we'll install the hammer. The strut goes in here. And then the hammer screw goes through here. Now, if you have a less, a little bit of trouble getting getting this to get started, don't forget that there's a hole in this piece that the that the hammer screw also has to go through, and so you may have to make a little bit of adjustment here. That's why I didn't tighten down this screw and this screw until we got the hammer in place. And so I got the hammer where it needed to be lined up with the hole, but then I had to move this just a little bit to get the screw to go through. Okay, now that we have that, let's go ahead and tighten up the hammer screw. Now we can tighten up these two screws. And I think I just heard my ejector fall out. There it is. So we're going to install this guy again. Now we can get the bolt. This track needs to be down in this orientation. And the, the extractor, this is the extractor, the extractor is in the up position in this orientation. Okay, and we're going to want to install, insert the bolt to about this position right here. about right there. And that way, the finger lever can go in. It has to go into a slot in the, in fact, let's take a look at that. The finger lever has got to go into this slot on the bolt. Once we get it in there, and then we install our finger lever screw. Okay, now this will go back the same way that it came out, and I'll show you without the uh, without the mainspring, without the hammer spring. like that. And then this goes into the notch. And then we're going to drop this down in place like this. 
That's the way it's going to go together. Under tension, it's a little bit more difficult, but that's the mechanics. So we'll put the hammer spring on. Make sure that your hammer is all the way forward, and that way you're not having to fight. You're not having to fight the spring tension. Okay, I've got this. I've got this started here. And I just rotate in place. Now you're going to want to make sure this needs to be centered, this bar. This bar needs to be centered left to right or the hammer will rub when it goes to full cock. So you want to make sure that there's no, that there's no rubbing happening right here. And if there is, then you just want to adjust this left or right until there's no rubbing. Okay, so we're in good shape here. Okay, let's put the stock back on. Last screw. We need to change tips. So there it is, the Marlin 336 or the Marlin 1895 disassembled just for routine cleaning. I hope, so I hope that was helpful. And let's go down, down range now and, um, and we'll see if we can't pop some pumpkins and see what kind of uh, surprises are inside. Okay, cleaned up and ready to go. But as I said, we're going to shoot uh, two rounds. One's going to be the 150 grain interlock bullet from Hornady. And then we're going to come back and with a new pumpkin, new water jugs, and we're going to shoot the 170 grain. That's a federal, uh, federal uh, cartridge. 170 grain with a nozzler uh, partition bullet in it. So let me get shooting and uh, we'll see what this 150 grain interlock bullet does from Hornady. Hundred and fifty grain interlock. See you in the next video.